I thank you for the opportunity for, for being involved in this discussion. I'm a geography teacher at Loretta Norman Hurst. Um, and a geography from tells you 21 kilometres north of the Harbour Bridge in Sydney. And this issue is very dear to my heart, like it is yours, and hopefully in action as well. The area um, to examine is the means of implementation, which is, covers points 60 to 71. I'll put some links in the panel chat area of um, my notes um, for you, and hopefully um, Andrew, the organiser, can distribute them more widely to the other 20 or so people listening. In essence, the focus is for point 60 and 61 is to reaffirm the commitment to the agenda, but also to assert that the goals and the targets are equally important and so should the implementation strategy. Um, I think that's quite an important point. Point 62 and 63. 62 looks at um, to the notion to revitalise the global partnership, in particular with reference to the Addis Abba, Abba is that, that it? Action a Agenda. Three, and that looks at four key points. And the four key points are looking at domestic public resources, domestic and international private businesses and finance, international development cooperation, and international trade. Um, I've put the link into the panel area because there's a lot of information there which is quite useful. Um, also, there's a very useful, if you use Twitter, hashtag as well, and the hashtag is hashtag FFD3, and I'll put the link in there as well. So you, if you want to follow up the background to that point, you can as well. Point 63 and 64 looks at the nationally owned sustainable development strategies supported by um, what national governments can do. And also point 65 looks at the implementation of the strategies and different programs in different countries. Clearly, looking at these points at the moment, there's a pattern that each nation has a responsibility and obligation to do something. A comment was made er earlier by Gorey, um, acting locally for the wider good of the nation. Point 65 looks at a very important point called the middle income countries. They have significant cha challenges as well but they also have a role to have play in this process. Yes, middle income countries have their own issues which need to be addressed, but it's a balancing act. I'm sure there are overlapping issues related to the sustainable development goals in these countries that will be have global application as well. In point 66, they talk about the public policies that are required to make implementation possible. And this is once again related to the principle of ownership and they specifically refer to national ownership. That's going to be a challenge for countries, I believe, because to be honest, it needs a change perhaps of culture, a national culture of sharing for the wider world. Um, in particular, there's point 67 looks at the role of private business activities. And there's, if I just may share with you a brief story I came across um, recently, there's a a clip I'm going to send to you now to look at at your own time. It's on Facebook if you want to look at it at Facebook. It's a video clip about billions in change and it was a, a, a gentleman who um, made billions of dollars in money in relation to um, sports supplement drinks and he's redirected hundreds of thousands of dollars into energy, water and health in the country in which he's located. So once again, it's another example of at the implementation stage of what we can do at the national level to do things. Point 68 and 69 refer to international trade and 69 refers to helping countries deal with their long-term debt. Point 70 is an interesting one. It's called the Technology Facilitation Mechanism. In short, what does it mean? It's a cloud-based platform for collaboration, communication, connection and um, hopefully getting things done. Uh, what you'll find there is a lot of information which will be very useful at a national level. And then finally in point 71, they reiterate that this agenda is universal and interlinked. What I'd like to do just briefly is to make some comments and suggestions of what we can do at a national level. Um, in my case, I'd just like to refer to examples in Australia which may have application across um, other countries. Recently, our foreign minister was in the UN and she made the statement, Julie Bishop, about what our role should be and could be in the United Nations over the next 10 years, specifically mentioning the Sustainable Development Goals. It's important to remember that and bring that back to the um, 
front end of the media line so we can get some action there. Just recently in the Loretto.org.au magazine, there was a article about healthy skin VG to help albinos in VG. I actually have personal knowledge of this situation and Dr. Margot Whitfeld is a person who is a doer and a person who lobbies. And I think there's a ch chance for different countries to really look for the thought leaders who are trying to make a difference in the world to support them. And once again, if you've missed that article and would like to look at it, I will put a link to that as well. Um, The other thing I'd like to refer to from a national level you could do is look at the digital national leadership for the spreading of information. And so you could create digital communities based on sustainable um, development goals. And then this is, reflects point 70 as well, the United Nations task team on science, technology and innovation. The other thing you can do in a country at an information level is state-based decision-making initiatives. As a teacher, um, we could, myself, we could lobby our professional associations, in the case of New South Wales, the Professional Teachers' Council, to have workshops incorporating the goals into curriculum and planning meetings. Academic organisations like the Geography Society of New South Wales, they have committee memberships from universities and are all around New South Wales. These groups, I know, are working, perhaps in silos, on these issues through the use of social media and other means of collaboration, we could work together as a team to implement strategies here. And the final point I'd like to make, um, having reflected on the points there, as well as the federal and state-based initiatives, is to consider linkages in our local community. And what you'll find then, in, in where we are, Hornsby Council, for example, has initiatives, and if you look closely at their local community groups, they all reflect aspects of the goals. There's a bushland management community group. There's a catchment remediation group. There's a floodplain risk management committee. There's a homelessness task force. There's a bushfire management committee. There's a heritage advisory committee. There's the local Hawkesbury estuary management committee. There's the Sydney councils, coast councils group. And then there's a whole lot of advisory councils for um, social relations in the area. And then the other aspect you could do in a local area that we all can be involved in is our schools. And our schools are all involved in areas like um, outreach ex experiences with other communities, charity work, and to finish off what this is about, a partnership. And schools can go into partnership with rural areas of New South Wales or in other areas of Sydney that need support. So in essence, the implementation, implementation strategy is a reflection of um, points 60 through to um, 71 and then there's potential for implementation if we break it down into the federal level, the state level and the local level, both in the local political level and, and the classroom school level. Anyway, thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you.